Good morning. You are viewing one of a series of videos called Conversations with Mocha. Mocha was sitting next to me. We, Mocha and I, are speaking to a series of people in our community who are involved with the protection and care of animals. I'm Pat Belusic, the host for this series and the president of the New York State Humane Association. Look at the links below for the, to the New York State Humane Association and also to additional information and links discussed during the session. So let's get started. I'd like to introduce our guest, uh, Robbie Schiff Hi. Uh, from the Mid-Hudson Ve Vegans. And um, let's get started. Um, I've known Robbie for some time, but I really don't have a good idea of a lot of her background and how she came to this. So I'd like to find that out as well as you folks. Um, Robbie, what brought you to vegetarianism? How long ago did that happen? And was it like a series of steps or did you have an aha moment or how did that happen? Okay, thanks for asking that, Pat. And thanks for asking me to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me uh, correct the name of our group. It's Hudson Valley Vegans. Okay. It used to be Mid-Hudson Vegetarian Society. Okay. We can get into that okay. uh, a little bit later. All right, back in the late 80s, I read John Robbins' Diet for a New America, as a lot of people did. That opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. I read a few more things. I read Robert Kalachowski's uh, Judaism and Vegetarianism. And I became aware I didn't do anything. <laughs> then, in the early 90s, my father was living in Palm Springs, California. He needed a little help. I went out there for a couple of months. I didn't know anyone except him. And, uh, you know, spending 24-7 with your adult parent, <laughs> you need a few friends. I didn't have any there. found a synagogue that did a series of programs on a Sunday morning for everybody who didn't play golf, I guess. <laughs> Uh, one of them that I went to, there were two brothers, they were lawyers, they were members of that congregation, they did a program on animal cruelty and all the things we've come to know, and I already knew a lot of this, but seeing this, hearing this from two live people, I said, they're right, I should do this. I didn't go home and... Uh, throw everything out of my father's freezer, but when I got back home a month or so later, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I stopped eating meat. I didn't have a long time between being uh, veg and being vegan because I had read that there's even more cruelty in the dairy industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think years ago when people first started doing this, they would go vegetarian thinking that the animals weren't harmed or that there was nothing wrong with dairy. Today, I think most people, especially younger people, if they make a change, they become vegan right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you um, say a few words about the differences between the two approaches? Yes. And I still find people who ask, and I don't say, what do you mean you still don't understand that? get my nice calm voice and I say uh, people who are vegetarian do not eat any animal flesh. People who are vegan do not use, eat or wear animal products. So uh, we don't use dairy, we don't use honey, uh, we don't use sour cream, we don't use butter. Today it's pretty easy. There's so many things that can substitute. And I think that being vegan is uh, becoming more accepted, and the term, mm -hmm. uh, more and more people know what it is today. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, at the time that you were, when you say you returned home, you weren't here in upstate New York. You no, were, I was in the were, city. You were in the city. And at one point, you, my understanding of your background is you were a teacher, and you were in Kansas, and you were a teacher. That was before, that was moving, before you went down to this New York. journey. So I was not. Uh, obviously I couldn't do uh, veg activism when I was still eating meat. Uh, what I was doing then, I did smoke-free work for about 20 years mm -hmm. and I taught stop smoking clinics and uh, so I, I was teaching science in a junior high and so I would always do a very complete unit on tobacco and I 
seeing the way I handled that, if I had been vegan then, I think I would have been fired. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say in the Midwest. Yes. Yeah, at that time period. Yeah. Um, so you you kind of have this real consciousness mm -hmm. of the environment mm -hmm. and of the body, and it kind of like moved in that direction of yes. veganism because it all works together. Yes. Really. Um, and the Mid Hudson Vegetarian Society. Now, were you involved with that from the onset? Or no. Or, or, um, can you tell us a little bit about, about the society and how it got yes, started? Yes. Our you got founder's involved? name is Ray Schlecht mm -hmm. from Kingston, New York. And back in the early 90s, she was a long distance bike rider. And one day she read that loading up on carbohydrates was the best way to prepare for a race. And she said, Well, I'll do that. And then she thought, well, if that gives you the best energy for a race, maybe it gives you the best energy for your life. And another thing she did, uh, looking down at her beloved dog, Zach, and looking at his haunch, she said, oh, that looks like a leg of lamb. I wouldn't eat him. She ran off some flyers, put them up around Kingston, um, and 40 people came to a meeting, and that was the beginning of Mid-Hudson Vegetarian Society. Uh, fast forward to uh, 2000, summer of 2001, I had uh, bought my house in Rhinebeck and uh, I think it was Connie Young introduced me to Mid-Hudson Veg. I started going to meetings. I heard about the Summerfest conference in Pennsylvania. I went with Ray mm -hmm. and on the way home she said, okay, my term limits, we have term limits, my term is up, you're the next president. I said, I'm not even on your board, just, that's okay. <laughs> oh, that's how Executive it started. decision. Yes. <laughs> so you've been kind of the president ever since, when, when, when was that? Oh, again? okay, that was, two, I uh, was installed in 2002, early mm -hmm. in the year. There were term limits of six years. After my six years, uh, we had two presidents who, uh, one served two years, one served a year or so, and then... Nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I took over again, but I never became president. I call myself the coordinator. Okay. Well, there's a lot of work to do. I mean, I'd like to discuss a little bit about the vegetarian Thanksgiving that you put on every year. Okay. Uh, that, that takes a lot of coordination and work, and it's probably one of the reason why people don't want to get involved <laughs> and various activities you do. do okay. Do but let's talk a little bit about that. All right. Uh, the Thanksgiving actually started many years ago, I think about 30 years ago, up in uh, Albany with Jean Daniels, mm -hmm. I think in her living room. And then an animal rights group did it. Eventually, Mid-Hudson Veg did it. So the potluck uh, Thanksgiving dinner is older than any of the organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have it every year on Thanksgiving Day. Some people say, well, why don't you have it on the weekend? Well, we have a lot of people who don't want to go where there's a turkey on the table on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is uh, held at the Reformed Church in Rhinebeck. It's uh, potluck. We can hold about 85 people, and we always fill it up. Mm -hmm. Have you found that new people are coming over the years? and? Joining the older people, I mean, or longer-term people that have been there, do you keep getting a new crop of people? Uh, we do, and uh, the reason I think we do, in 2011, I heard that the organization Veg Fund was going to pay the startup cost for 10 vegan meet-up groups. I jumped right on it. Huh. I formed a meet-up group, and I named it Hudson Valley Vegans. Mm -hmm because I really believe we should be using the term vegan. Mm -hmm. And uh, the members of my board were kind of stodgy. They didn't want to change the name. Well, that's our name, and we may right, turn right. some people off. I think that's turning around a little bit. Some people say, well, vegetarian, but we're vegan. You know, you don't have cheese, do you? <laughs> So I formed the meetup group, and we have, oh, 300 and some members now. Do they all come to meetings and events? No, but uh, a good deal do. And so I've combined the two groups, and I call everything Hudson Valley Vegans You don't now. find that that move to calling it the vegan group has put off people? You think it's more encouraged them? I think it has, yeah. And uh, I have no...
not had anyone say to me that, oh, well, I'm not coming anymore because you changed the names. Okay, so. that hasn't happened. Well, that's a good thing. Um, so I know you're involved with the synagogues in our area. There's a couple I believe mm -hmm. you're involved in, and you're trying to introduce that population to vegan-type food at some of their activities or their potlucks. Is that correct? Yes, I have a feeling that people of faith, no matter what their faith is, should be more concerned about the suffering, the continual suffering of the animals, the damage to the environment, the damage to their own health. And uh, there are lots of biblical teachings. You uh, feed your animals before you feed yourself. Mm -hmm. And you uh, don't let an oxen and a donkey plow together because they're of unequal weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Genesis 129, it lays out that all of the green food of the earth is meant for us to eat. It isn't until later on after the flood that people started to eat meat. Well, that was because a lot of the greenery had been destroyed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, even though the Bible doesn't say you can't eat meat, it doesn't encourage you to eat meat. Mm -hmm. And there's even one story, when wandering in the desert, people got tired of the manna, and they said, we want meat. Mm -hmm. And quail were sent, and they ate the quail until... They could eat no more, and it was hanging out of their teeth, and then the next day they all got sick. Uh, you never hear the mediators quoting that one. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of inspiration if you look for it in text, whether you're Christian, Jewish, Islamic, uh, to really look at this. And it just doesn't happen. You see the signs, um, uh, pig roast, roast yeah, beef right. dinner, yeah. Spaghetti and meatball dinner all over churches have right. those. So, right. yes, I have been working on doing something about this. Anyone watching this wants to help in this effort, contact me. Have you gotten some pushback from the more conservative members of the synagogue? Or is it one of the, the more forward-thinking synagogues? Um, okay, well, I'm involved in two. Uh, one uh, in the Poughkeepsie area, one in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And both of them at least do not serve meat. They do do dairy. Uh, and I have some people that agree with me. Uh, what's happened, people love my food. Mm -hmm. Because I feel that you have to show people that the food is good. Mm -hmm. And I guess even though you haven't asked this, I could answer this right now. I, I had someone say to me a few months ago, well, you're not really an animal rights person. You know, I don't see you going to protests and all that. And I said, no, because I think people should do what they do best. And mm -hmm. one of the things I do best is make and bring good vegan food. Mm -hmm. And no that's influenced this congregation I, to I think it, 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 they, they know more than they used to mm -hmm. know. Did uh, many of them turn vegan? Not yet. Okay. But they're receptive, it sounds as though. Well, the, the rabbi is receptive. So. And he's always telling people what wonderful things I've done for them. Uh -huh. Oh, so. good. All right. Well, it sounds like some progress is being made there. Robbie, with regard to dairy, now a lot of people, I know that Ingrid at one point stated if she had to do the movement over again uh, towards to veganism, she would have gone with dairy first. Uh, because she thinks there's more cruelty there. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. You're quoting Ingrid Newkirk, yes. founder of PETA, yes. and I completely agree with that. Uh, every mammal produces milk, and the milks are different. They are tailored for the growth pattern of that species. So human babies are quite different than puppies and kitties or baby, even baby goats, the, who grow and mature very fast and especially different from cows. A uh, human mother has a baby, let's say the baby weighs 7 pounds, she nurses this baby for a year, the baby will weigh 20, 22 pounds. In the same time, the 30 pound calf will grow to 800 to 1,000 pounds. The milk is very different. If you give a newborn cow's milk straight, 
they'll get very sick. They can't handle. That's where mm -hmm. formula came from. Mm -hmm. The first formulas were condensed milk with water and caro syrup mm -hmm. added. That's what many babies were fed. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I was fed. Mm -hmm. so I can blame all my failings on, on that. And uh, the protein is all wrong. And the hormones, even if you had your own cow in your backyard, and Linda, you have room for a cow out here, and you had Bessie in your backyard, and you used her milk, and you never gave her any hormones or antibiotics, her milk is filled with growth factors, which are hormones. Mm -hmm. And so our bodies have to try to take something that's highly unsuitable and deal with it. I mean, even as adults. Even as adults. And no other species drinks milk from another species. Mm -hmm. You don't see Purina making uh, universal cat milk for your mm -hmm. dogs and goats. Mm -hmm. uh, and no other species drinks milk after weaning. Milk is meant to be something to nourish an infant till it's able to eat whatever that species mm -hmm. eats. So it's not natural. It has become natural because certain groups of humans have done it for a long time. So yeah. the whole dairy industry is also predicated on keeping those cows pregnant. Yes. And, and oh, the cruelty, lives. yes. Yeah. The, they call, the industry calls it the rape rack. This isn't something that the vegans made up. This is where they artificially inseminate the cows because a cow cannot lactate to produce milk unless she's had a calf, just like humans. And so she has a calf. The calf is literally torn away from her, and the, cry, the mother cries, the baby cries. Uh, and if it's a male calf, it's sold away for a veal crate or very early mm -hmm. slaughter. If it's a female, she's kept in a dark barn, given a milk substitute made from blood until she's two years old and can be uh, used for, for dairy. And also, if a cow and a calf are in the field, the, cow, the calf will come up and nurse uh, every 20 minutes. So to have these huge, full udders and be only milk twice a day is not natural. And also, a cow today produces three times as much milk as cows in 1950. Because of the yes. additives so, that they've yes. to the cow. Yeah. Uh, so their lives are miserable. And in addition yeah. to that, it seems from the health perspective of humans, uh, the, the fatty material in milk, whole milk and cheeses mm -hmm. and so on, sour creams, yeah. is not particularly The fat healthy. is not good. Right. And what I was talking about before, the protein. Right. Okay, I had uh, arthritis. I was on medication when I went vegan, and mm -hmm. uh, it went away. And I wasn't expecting that, and I didn't understand why. But now I do the lar those large protein molecules. They, in some people, they leave the gut, they get in the blood, they get deposited in the joints. Oh, and, for some people, it would be mm -hmm. helpful then to get Yeah, and this together. is just cosmetic, but I used to have uh, dark circles under my eyes. Those went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder how much money I've saved in concealer for over mm -hmm. 20 years. <laughs> so, uh, from all those perspectives, dairy is not a good... Thing. No, it's not. Um, now, the whole movement that we know towards vegetarianism and veganism, do you feel that it is moving at some, in some sort of part of positive direction, or do you feel that the publicity and, and the endless propaganda with the advertisements from agribusiness for meat and such is overwhelming any progress that the movement is making. I think it's going both ways. I did want to show these before. This is the organization Jewish Veg out mm -hmm. of Pittsburgh. They are doing really good outreach. There's a Christian vegetarian association that goes to all kinds of concerts of uh, Christian music and passes out literature. There are, there are good things uh, being done. Uh, this is a vegan starter guide from Friends of Animals. Mm -hmm. And it not only has recipes and suggestions, but it explains why. Mm -hmm. So I give these out a lot. Uh, the word vegan itself has become kind of uh, more mainstream. mainstream. Right. Uh, and what I like is I'm seeing it used 
even when the article is not about being vegan. Something I read recently, uh, making fun of trendy young, whatever they call the yuppies now. And, uh, it said, oh, you know, they are so busy uh, posing in their yoga outfits and showing pictures of their latest vegan cheesecakes. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's good. Yeah, it's right. getting, getting people knowing what vegan is. And I think it's okay if they make a little bit of fun of us. You have to be able to laugh at mm -hmm. yourself. Now, my understanding, too, is uh, you do some vegan cooking classes yourself at the house or at different locations. Can okay. you speak to that for a moment? Yeah, thank you. All right. Here's, I don't expect people to read this, but these are our upcoming events. And we have a mix of things that are uh, out in the community and also uh, I have a space at my home that I call the Vegan Venue. And uh, we have done some cooking classes there. We had a program last month where one of our members taught us about growing herbs in containers. We're going to have the vegan poet Gretchen uh, Premack uh, in a couple of months. I usually try to have something around the solstice and the equinox mm -hmm. to uh, celebrate the change of season. So that room can hold about 20 people. Okay. Uh, so we, if people wanted to look into, perhaps if you're going to run a cooking class, they could go to that website? Uh, you can either go to our website, which is hvvegans.org. Okay, Hudson Valley Vegans, they can yeah. Google. Mm -hmm. okay. Or uh, you can uh, Google Hudson Valley Vegans, That will, and you click on the link, that will take you to our meetup. That's the easiest way to find it. And you can join that meetups for those of you that don't belong to any there's meetups for anything you might want to do and can you explain kind of what that is do they go to a restaurant i mean what is well the meetup is whatever the organizers of the meetup decide uh, the events will be okay and so i really have combined uh, the former mid hudson veg society with the meetup the activities are all okay. the same it's all one organization uh in uh, September, we're having Dr. Milton Mills, who's a wonderful speaker. And, well, this is September of 2016, in case this gets to be a really popular series. <laughs> uh, and uh, he is an acclaimed speaker. Uh, he presents in many places, and we're having him on uh, Sunday. Uh, What's he speaking to, Robbie? And uh, I'm going to let him do one of his favorites. Meat eating and the biology of disgust. <laughs> well, that sounds interesting. Yeah, you can find him on YouTube, Milton Mills, MD. He has a basic one, uh, Are Humans Designed to Eat Meat? He has one about fiber. He has one about diabetes. They're all very well researched and entertaining mm -hmm. uh, PowerPoint uh, presentations. So you would, it seems to me, you would almost be advocating a vegan diet not only for the well-being, which is the most important thing to me, of the animals, but also the equally important counterpart of health. Absolutely. It's animals, it's health, it's the environment, and also the reduction of world hunger. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> 16 gallons of water to grow a pound of vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, 2,500 gallons of water for a pound of beef. Uh, and we are heading into water shortages. Yes. And uh, I also do outreach at uh, various events. We table, and Ray Schleck got me into this uh, in the very beginning. There, most uh, colleges have health fairs. Also, uh, there are community days that various towns have. And you can get a table and uh, talk to people there. Uh, uh, we'll be at the Rhinebeck Farmers Market in September. We do that once a year. I forgot to put that on here. Uh, so uh, uh, I like to do outreach. I also uh, have done it in San Francisco and in uh, up at the uh, Albany Veg Fest. Uh, I go down to Tampa every year and have a table there, Veg Fest, because one of our former members uh, is now active down there and. When I do that, I appear as Veg Hedda. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a persona that I created to uh, draw a little interest and reach people. I understand there's going to be a Veg Fest 
and I don't know if you're the organizer or what, but down in Newburgh, there's yes. a Yes, no, place. I am not the organizer. Okay. This is the flyer for it. I found out about it uh, through an email. Um, and, and they should look at your website. Uh, yes, absolutely. Fish, and it's the first annual Hudson Valley uh, Vegan Food Fest. It's actually put on by a commercial uh, group. And, uh, but they're having vegan vendors, mm -hmm. and I signed up for us to have a table. Oh, so that sounds like it'd be a nice event to go to more Absolutely, consciousness yes. in this area. Okay, uh, wramping up here a little bit, are there other things that you get involved in other than running the organization as far as these other outreach? Do you do additional teaching or outreach anywhere? Uh, I, I will go and speak or... Uh, almost anywhere I'm asked, and uh, yeah, it's these trips to the various uh, veg fests uh, that uh, uh, that I've done for a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there any final words that you'd like <clears throat> to leave our audience with um, that um, are of interest to you that meant a lot mm -hmm. to you along the way? Yes, uh, I I think that this is a really good thing that you are doing. Mm -hmm to uh, bring this information and introduce people who are doing this work and showing that uh, we're not uh, a bunch of nuts and mm -hmm. crazy people, mm -hmm. at least I hope we're not coming off that way. And uh, I think that if uh, everyone does <clears throat> what they can do, uh, there's a group of teachings called the uh, Ethics of the Fathers politically correct, it's now the ethics of the sages, and it teaches uh, it is not incumbent upon you to finish the job, but neither are you free to desist from it altogether. And if you follow that, you lose the excuse, well, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough knowledge, I don't have enough resources. Everyone can do something. Mm -hmm. Great. So well, thank, thank you. you for this thank opportunity. Thank you very much. Roberta, we appreciate your coming. And uh, our viewers, remember to subscribe to our video series, Conversations with Mocha, by clicking the subscribe button below. Also, you can request notifications for each new video by clicking the button next to the subscribe button. We thank you for being with us. I thank Robbie for coming, and we look forward to seeing you again.